Public meeting order of the Murfreesboro District Board of Education. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mrs. Judy? Here. Mrs. Brazel's absent. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Brown? Here. Mrs. Evaldi? Here. Mr. Beavers? Here. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Next time for approval of the agenda, is there any additions or corrections? Nope. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So we'll move. <coughs> second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? Motion carried. Item number five is approval of the consent agenda, which consists of District 186 reg regular board meeting minutes dated October 17, 2023, Tri County regular board meeting minutes dated October 11, 2023, Tri County bills for November 2023, applications and reports. I'll entertain a motion to approve that. Move. And a second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item number six is approval of District 186 bills. Do I have any questions? Motion to approve the bills. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Judy? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mrs. Ubaldi? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Item number seven, communication. We have two. Oh, that's, it. that's it. The first one is from Paige New Farmer. <clears throat> says, I'm emailing in regards to the basketball season. I'm unable to coach full time this year due to my school, work, and clinical schedule. I need to be taken off payroll. I still want to help when and if I can. I just do not want to take money from the budget when I can't commit completely to it. I can't and won't do that. Save the money and if possible, put it towards the girls' basketball program. I feel they need it. I have no idea if that's even possible. I don't know how it works, but if you could use it. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Paige New Farmer. Entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. And a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Next one's from Kim Brown. Board members and staff, first of all, let me say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope you've had a blessed holiday and enjoy some quality time with family and friends. To the matter at hand, please accept this resignation letter from my position as MHS freshman volleyball coach. With my recent diagnosis, I'm forced to step down from my coaching responsibilities as I do not know how much time I will need to fully recover from treatments and surgery. When I accepted the position, I had no idea how much this season the coaches and the girls, my girls, would end up meaning to me, not only from a coaching standpoint, but also from a personal perspective. My freshman girls worked hard for me and accepted each challenge I offered them. I watched them grow not only as players and athletes, but also as young ladies supporting their team on and off the court. They ended their season with a fantastic record and so much to look forward to as a future athletic Red Devils. To say I'm proud is an understatement. I told all of the girls they will never know how much they mean to me and how much coaching them this season has meant. They occupied my mind and my time in a very dark moment. For me, um, make a motion. Yeah. yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, I can't make the motion. No, I'll, I'll, just... I'll make the motion and continue. Yeah. Second. I'm about Tara, did you? Sorry. Sorry. I don't even know who made the first. Who made the first? Who made the first? Tara okay. and okay. Shannon. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Fishbowl. From Stacy Hickam at Carruthers, Mrs. Uh, Heather Parr, tech teacher at Carruthers, was awarded a $3,000 technology grant, and she now has a 3D printer and accessories to go along with it. The students will be able to learn about and use it in the technology class. Second, Ms. Stephanie Hansen took 12 students from Carruthers to the district choir concert in Belleville at Belleville West High School. The group sang for three hours in the morning and then performed in a huge concert in the afternoon. Lots of hard work and effort from both of these wonderful teachers at Carruthers. Thank you and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Mrs. Stacy Hickam. Cool. I think we got the other one. <clears throat> on Saturday, November 4th, SIUC held the annual Expanding Your Horizons Conference. Murfreesboro Middle School had 18 students and two teachers. Ms. Bartnick and Ms. May attend the conference. 
Our school had the most students in attendance for the second year in a row. Students participated in hands-on activities with a science focus. Some of the activities were an egg drop, dentistry, aviation, magnets, and MRI machines, x-rays, and chemistry. A highlight for these students was seeing what happened to different objects in liquid nitrogen. Everyone had a nice day. Students and teachers are already looking forward to attending next year. Number nine is the Freedom of Information Act request from Laura Messick with Key Impact requesting food service bids awards for the 23-24 school year and said the information was provided in a timely manner. Item number 10 is recognition of the audience. The Board of Edu Education welcomes the audience to make public or employee comments. The Board has set aside time in the agenda specifically for this purpose. Pursuant to Board Policy 2.230, each speaker shall be limited to a five-minute presentation. Please be aware that while this is the time for the public to express its opinions and or concerns, the Board may or may not comment regarding public presentations. If a matter of public comment warrants discussion or action of the Board of Education, such discussion or action will be added to the agenda of a future meeting. Are there any public concerns? Are there any employee concerns? If not, thank you all for coming. Item number one under old business is approval of architectural services. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So we have Ryan Dodd here tonight, and then um, we have two committee members from the board who are here too. So we can kind of talk to you about the process and how we arrived at our decision. So do you want to present first? Uh, either way, I'll, I'll just kind of present or to give him the introduction. So. Um, Eight um, architects threw the name in the hat. We interviewed seven of the eight on last Wednesday. Um, I think I was pleased with the amount, and you know, the you had people who've been in it forever. You had people who uh, fairly new in it. You had you know some of the architects who have all the bells and whistles and toys and stuff that makes it really really neat. And I think what we came down to was a, a nice mix of all of that. Where um, Ryan really got the heart in it. Um, we're gonna get a quality product out of him, no doubt. Um, but there's, it's kind of how Troy looked at me when it was all said and done after we'd gone through and Ryan was the second to last of the day and after he walked out, Troy, uh, Troy said, man, that just felt right. And that's kind of the only way to sum it up is um, first time I'd ever met Ryan, but sat at a table is like, he's been our guy for a long time. Um, or no, it's Cody that said it just felt right. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it really, uh, it's gonna be a, a fun uh, future with Ryan, you know, taking the helm as architect and, um, they're definitely not. Uh, and you could tell they were a team. You could tell they were a team. And so when you're looking at like merging our team, like with their team, it didn't seem there were a lot of groups that came and presented where they had two to six individuals at the table who all just were like kind of um, process driven and pr like presentation driven, and it never felt like that. It yeah, I'll, like I'll just add that that his presentation sold sold me, um, <coughs> and that. Uh, it was obvious that he wanted us uh, as a, a customer, probably above and beyond anybody else that presented that day, that his, his passion uh, about wanting us as a client and wanting to make us happy really showed through. And I think you'll see that in the presentation. So thank you for being here, Ryan. And definitely spoken highly of by local contractors. So yeah. that was a big stamp of approval. Cody from the and or Matt from the administrative team, anything to add? I just uh, the passion was higher than anyone else, and you can tell he cares about schools. Um, you can tell that he wants us to be a priority of his, um, and he's ready to not just build gyms or cafeterias. He's ready to make them areas that give our students an opportunity to be better and then to just be innovative in student processes. And that, that's the part that got me. Mm. You could see what, what he wanted to do with students, what he wanted students to be able to use his designs to do. So it was impressive. Yeah, Mr. Dodd's gonna invest in our, our kids and our students in our community. And I'm excited about working with him. Yep. It was impressive. Flattered. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm Ryan Dodd, Dodd Architects. Uh, our office is out of Anna. I'll try not to take too much of your time tonight, but essentially we have architects and staff. 
a graphic designer readily available as well, but then we hire consultants uh, to manage different aspects of the team. We work with the same team and this will be your team on all projects going forward. Uh, as here in Eaton, as Praveen Sunny, local to Murfreesboro, has a good mm -hmm. knowledge of the Murfreesboro systems. Uh, Markham and BFW, office located out of Marion, Illinois, and they're housed out of uh, Paducah, Kentucky as well. That's an office group. Uh, they're sister companies, an office group of about 150, 160 staff members um, dedicated to us as well uh, as we need, uh, as well as farmer environmental when needed. Um, just some local references from local contractors in the area. Um, you know, discussing through the Murphy's World site, it's extremely fortunate. Everything was planned in a way that for this future gym site, oh, it's set up exactly right. It's, it's exactly where you'd want to put the gym. Often you go to a new school and they need an item. They need a new media center. They need a gym. They need something. And you got to work with whatever you can to fit it into their program. Here, you're set up just right. It's gonna work out fantastically with the parking uh, available. The green lot on the right, that is essentially where I understand the site for the gym would be. Um, and that's exactly where, when we pulled up to the site for the first time with that kind of eyes to it, it's exactly where we would choose to put it as well. Um, so you're set up great as far as a new front door on, on campus as well. Um, one big thing, we have to respect what's here on site. Uh, we have to respect the auditorium project th that's been here. May not use the same exact products and materials, but we at least have to do a balance with what we do going forward um, to make it a cohesive unit. Uh, not saying we necessarily need to use concrete tilt-up panels, but might have to use some concrete and, and some detailing to, to tie it all together. Some innovative just thinking. This, is just a typical run of the mill locker room. Football, congratulations, semifinals, something to be proud of. Football takes a huge amount of players and students. You know, after football season, whatever, say, a new locker room comes, rolling door could come down, separate wrestling area. Another could separate basketball area. You know, not saying this is what we have to do, but we like to come with different ideas of ways to get the best product with, at the same time, using your dollars as, as rational and as functional as possible. It's, Murfreesboro is a, a nice big district, but it's a Southern Illinois district and the dollars always need to be a tight concern. Um, so kind of jumping into the site, um, you've got basically a big area of land, 110 feet by 200 feet, uh, 260 on the other side, but we're tying into some existing buildings. Um, as you're aware, the gym, the existing gym, is directly kind of dead center in the heart of, of the image on screen. Different ideas will have to be developed. Basically, when, when we started thinking about it, we started thinking of ideas in general, but these ideas are nothing without all of you. We need to have meetings with coaching staff, ADs, administration, board, students, players, community members, to really understand what this building needs to become for Murfreesboro. Um, this particular image, it shows a sunken court. Um, is it feasible? Is it not? We'll have to do some soil studies to make sure as a, as a first step, but there's many different ways to, to bring a capacity of 1,600, 2,000 people uh, under a roof. Um, one thing, you know, a, a freshman volleyball game, if you fill up 2,000 seats, it's, going, it's like going to a restaurant and you're the only table there sometimes. So we have to do things and we have the opportunity to do things to where it's an intimate experience uh, no matter what level is, is hosting a competition. Um, different roof structures come into mind. Barrel vaults are, are synony synonymous with Midwestern basketball. Uh, Butler University, different, different uh, eras of basketball that are actually kind of trending back towards uh, future architecture as well. Um, tying in some ideas of working off the angles from the kind of more modern wing, the auditorium, working off some of those different angles um, to bring in space for weight room, locker room, whatever other program functions will sit down, determine you, you all need as well. Um, materiality, 
tying in those materials. If it's, it could be a brick that's a color match. It could be the actual exact panels. Um, but different ideas to tie in uh, little details of, of pride throughout. Um, as you see on the screen, you know, Murphy Pride, the borough, could be the school fight song on the wall towards the football field. Uh, the opportunities of making this a lot more than just a gym. Um, you're set up so nicely with softball, track, soccer, baseball, football, uh, to where this facility is much more than basketball and volleyball. It's a, it's a hub for everything athletics at Murfreesboro. So thinking through those processes throughout the design of, you know, a football, is there a new tradition of walking out the, the center doors, marching together to the field? Um, the bottom, bottom right, there's, you know, could be some sculptural type signage, 2023 state semifinal um, football team that year by year, people want to work hard to get their name in stone yeah. there. Um, red uh, foliage in, in fall, you know, white oak tree. So time in playoff season, it's popular <coughs> to grow red uh, throughout. So those are all the details we think about all the way through. Uh, important, very important to bring brand into a school. Um, the Red Devil logo, it's been the logo here for quite some time. Not saying at all that it needs to be changed, but we probably need to update the artwork, get it vectorized. We need to determine different fonts that go with it. Um, could Everything could say exactly the same, but we need to, at least need to have the conversations of, is this an opportunity to evolve into the future? Um, well, and, and even with the barrel roofing, I was thinking, you know, how unsightly when you pull up to even McElveen right now with the Aon units that are narrower, but they're mm -hmm. taller, you know, it's an opportunity to, come, uh, to mask some of the rooftop units so that you don't drive up to a gym or a space and go, oh, gosh, they have great looking Aon units. Exactly. So I'm the, the mechanical engineers like to see them, but that's the only person. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's the opportunity too to bring a new front door to campus, um, connecting what, you know, it's a, it's a very successful project on the auditorium. It really brought a whole new look to the high school and we have the opportunity to kind of continue finishing that, that new facade, um, a new face for all of Murfreesboro. Um, so that, those were kind of just some, some big ideas to start, but like I said in our interview, it's, it's just a start. You know, we've, we've got to sit down, we've got to explore your buildings, uh, go through the, with the IT staff, maintenance, learn what you like, learn what you don't like, and then listen as well, most importantly. Um, we'll listen to, to any and all idea. There's some ideas that we'll have that won't be a good idea at the end of the day, but everything has to be brought out there, discussed as a group, because it's, it's not just us building a gym, we're building Murfreesboro's gym, the Murfreesboro's projects. Um, we don't care what it might look in a magazine. It, it has to work for your students and your community. Um, so we really like to get into the, the nuances of what do you need this facility to be beyond just a place for basketball on Friday nights. I think that's one of the biggest things to me was <clears throat> with meeting with all the architects. Yeah, there's a lot of Red Bull architects out there who've done a lot of big school district <coughs> projects and they had pictures of those projects and I mean we saw a lot of other facilities at nauseum in you know an eight hour period and when Ryan he didn't show stuff he's worked on he showed us what he thinks it could look like for us and and so it was neat to other people you know as an architect you can easily drag drop click you know copy paste from a, a previous project and make it efficient and he didn't he the amount of, I mean, like, amount of time you put into that. Uh, does it have a red devil on the court when you showed the court? On the uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> they will be. You but even then, like, the center door where the yeah. football the team could come out for the marching The amount of work you put into just a presentation, this. just to you know, feel to put your name in the hat, it's it's amazing, and I'm excited for you know, obviously once you're on, you know, in in the Murfreesboro camp. We're meeting next week. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Just thought We're you ready know. tomorrow. All the meetings are going to have to be <laughs> exciting from here on out. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this you is set so the bar cool. high. Yeah. And and it's beautiful. All the the whole team was like a hundred percent smiles, and it was it was interesting when we ranked. We usually in most of the processes that I do, we don't talk about it first, you know. And then we'll we'll do rank, you know, your top one to seven, and um, every single one of us, uh, our top three were. 
all the same. I mean, we were definitely keyed into like the um, the connections, the relationship that we knew already existed, the chemistry of your team, and then what it could feel like with our team. So. And there's been some buzz about if anybody's seen the, the sneak peeks of the uh, Cobbin Gym. You know, Fager McGee just released some pictures of that, and there's some other ones on some other sites. You know, that's another one of Ryan's project, and some of the little things he's taken in that project to make it their gym, and it's um, it's amazing how you can build a gym and it's a gym, and then you build a gym and it's instantly yours. You don't even need the history behind it to make it yours. Those kids walk in that gym and that's their gym, and that's uh, that's neat. Excited for the opportunity. Any questions for Ryan? Mm -hmm. And his partner. Um, uh, lives in Ava, so if we have something that happens <coughs> mechanically, we can we can have someone on site like you within 45 minutes, probably to an hour, and um, I can't within 15 to 20 if, if there's something that comes, you know, big. And, and throughout the project, this project, future projects, I'll be the first point of contact. He'll be available, and uh, Kent it lives in Ava, he'll probably be with me at most meetings as well. We work kind of hand in hand, um, but I'll be your continuous face as well. Oh. I'd be delighted to make a motion to uh, hire Dot Architects. I'll second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mrs. Judy? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Beavers? Business resolution established preliminary tax levy and conclusion number one in the <coughs> Okay. Um, I'm not going to read everything, um, but we definitely need to have a levy hearing next month. Um, the working cash bonds that we that we sold already put us over that five percent amount, so that we need to have a levy. Um, I did pull the same information that I get from the assessor's office every year to see what you know what the EAV may look like and new property. So, um, you know, I've got those prelim preliminary numbers in there for the levy and the um, the uh, resolution that was also included. So it would be my recommendation that we hold the levy hearing um, be prior to the December board meeting and. I have a little PowerPoint like I did last year, very brief, um, but some detailed information for you at the next at the next board meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve the tax levy here. So moved. Second. 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 Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Uwaldi. Yes. Mrs. Judy. Yes. Mr. Beaver. Yes. Item number two, set tax levy hearing date and time. Which our next board meeting is at December 19th. So it's recommended to set the time at 5.45, December 19th, before the regular scheduled board meeting. Entertain a motion for the time and date. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Item number three is information, press policy update 113. Updates were pro provided via email and remain on review to the December meeting. Item number <coughs> four is permission to get quotes for electrical supply contract. It's a time. We've had a four-year contract with a really super good rate that we aren't going to see again um, at all. But um, the rates should come down a little bit from what they were quoting me back in February. We'll see uh, a little bit lower than that, but um, we are going to get some competitive quotes for the next board meeting. I've asked for those quotes to come in on the 12th, locked in on the 12th, so we have time to review those, get them out in the board packet to you um, the week before the meeting. So. I'll entertain a motion to go out for electrical bids. Are any of the current, the ones that have sent you quotes, are they quoting for one year, four years, five? It will be, um, I'm going to ask for uh, a one, two, three, and four rates to see what those look like. <coughs> and you know, there's there's potentially opportunity. Um, we were previously with the IEC, the um, Illinois Energy Consortium, and we haven't been with them the last couple contracts because their pencils just weren't sharp enough. Um, but I had a conversation the other day 
Uh, they have a local representative now um, that lives in the um, Carbondale, Carterville area, I believe, um, that talked about the, the purchasing power with, you know, so many other districts together. If we looked at a 12-month, we might be able to get a really great rate um, the next cycle. So we'll just have to see what comes back, what those rates look like, and what we're what the board's comfortable doing uh, on this I just know contract. that there's a contract out there that could be available to lock the rate in for five years. What kind of contract? I'll have to get the name of the company, okay. but um, I know someone in hand just locked it in for five okay. years at like uh, three or four cents per kilowatt hour. Or this is that an all-in price? Because this is the the full up. They're Ameren, so yes, it's under what Ameren offered. Way under. Yeah, I mean that's five years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely look at that. Um, anything that will <coughs> save us money and get us the best price for sure. Yeah, if you can get the contact. Yeah. To definitely. The they just have to go through the bid process. You know, they have to follow. Right. I'm just saying yeah. that if they can offer us a locked-in yeah. rate for five years, yeah. I mean, I'd almost competitive. Yeah. But right. Absolutely. So yeah, we just need a permission to go out and get the quotes, though. And we're still stuck um, working with Amron. The delivery cost is right. delivery cost. The lines and wires, those costs go <coughs> up, and we just don't have any control over that. But it's the actual, you know, purchasing the energy um, once deregulation happened, however many years ago. Um, you know, so we do have some options anyway. But yeah, we'll definitely take a look. If you can give me contact information, I'll reach out and give them what they need to um, get us the best prices. Motion to go out to bid for electric supply contract. And a second. Second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Susie Colony? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mrs. Judy? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. Item number five is approval of professional service agreement with American Institute for Research. Uh, it's required through the state because of our designation as comprehensive um, at the middle school and for others. So um, that's the vendor we have to work with. So. Entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. And a second. <coughs> second. Motion and a second. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mrs. Judy. Yes. Mrs. Evaldi. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Beavers. Yes. We have a move for a closed session. A motion to go to closed session pursuant to Section 2 of the Means Act 5 Illinois Compiled Statutes 122C to review the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, and dismissal of specific employees of the district, including any testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee to determine its validity. Second. <coughs> Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mrs. Judy? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Evaldi? Yes. Mr. Beavers? Yes. 